Hello, how are you this evening? I hope you're having a very pleasant evening. I have to say I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, there's the sound of the uh, rain outside and uh, I find that very comforting. Also, the trees are being uh, kind of swayed in the, in the wind, so it's a proper autumnal sound, actually perfect for this video. Um, and for what I'm going to speak about tonight. Uh, thank you for all your messages recently. Um, I really enjoy hearing, you know, your thoughts on the music. And uh, one of the songs that I'll be speaking about tonight, Forever Autumn, is on my album, Inspiritus. So, um, I thought that I would do a video about the inspiration behind me recording this song and also um, the experience that I'm having recently of being out in the parks in London and realizing more this year I think than ever the echo that is in nature and within our own lives as well you know how the kind of two can reflect each other um, the older I get the more deeply I feel this kind of relationship and the more I pre appreciate it as well. So, um, yeah, that song Forever Autumn, which obviously is from War of the Worlds, is such a beautiful, beautiful song and uh, heart wrenching, really, you know. Um, and walking through these parks in London, I really feel the connection with that song and uh, of having to let go of things that we'd really like to hang on to, you know. Um, uh, many of you might know that uh, I used to work as a psychotherapist and a lot of the work involved integrating um, into the client's life those things that they were trying to suppress and uh, re making known you know to ourselves the truth of the situations um, is a big part of it and also letting go you know like the leaves on the trees you know like the death that we see on the surface of things in the autumn and in the winter kind of allowing something to die and make room for something new to take place. I think actually that's one of the big lessons that I get from nature um, and reflecting on the seasons is knowing that there is a bigger picture, that what we see on the surface is only one small part of it. It might seem like there is a death, but nothing really dies. Um, that there is a new spirit, um, a re-emergence of spirit, a rebirth, um, a new chapter that's on its way. And uh, it's a bit like attending to the wound, isn't it, really? Um, and not letting the wound kind of grip you in life, realizing that there is something in that wound that's almost like a treasure. It's really the healing of the pain and the journey that we go on in facing the bits of ourselves that take a huge amount of courage to face. You know, that's what gives us real character, isn't it? in life and gives us a sense of depth and real engagement I think um, with life itself you know uh, so I came across this wonderful quote by Michael Mead and it's actually from uh, the, the genius myth the genius myth I think it's quite a profound and beautiful quote it says, we may be closest to hearing the call 
when we feel most alone or in trouble. For genius hides behind the wound and one of the greatest wounds in life is to not know who we are intended to be or what we are supposed to be in life. I think that's a really beautiful um, and profound quote there. And you know, in this season, I've really been in touch with that wound in a very different way than I have been uh, in my life before. Um, and I think we, we all feel this in some way, don't we, that when these important relationships end, sometimes it's because one of the people has passed over and yet there's so much that is unresolved, um, so much that we wonder about, you know. Um, does healing really take place on the other side? Are we really freed up from pain and trauma? and from the unresolved things in life and do we really get a chance again to reconnect with the uh, person that we have unfinished uh, business with you know uh, there's that saying that we hurt the ones that we love the most and i think that's very true i think the capacity to hurt someone when there is great love between you actually um, increases <laughs> um, and it's as if we can't have that great joy that great fulfillment without that great risk that comes with it as well the experience of being in the recording studio uh, recording forever autumn and trying not to <laughs> let my mind wander completely away um, into all the very powerful memories that Forever Autumn, that song, you know, evoked um, in me. Um, it's quite an experience recording it. So, uh, cheers, by the way. Um, if you haven't had a glass of red wine on an autumnal evening, I'm sure you have. But if you haven't, I do thoroughly recommend it. It's very nice. Cheers. Um, so yeah, out of all the songs on um, the album Inspiritus, um, that definitely ranks for me as one of the most you know gripping uh, piano arrangements um, uh, that that I made um, because the song holds so much you know power and emotion and memories uh, all kind of attached with it and so walking through these parks you know in London <coughs> excuse me <coughs> this autumn I have been reflecting a lot on the kind of things that we let go of and uh, sometimes it's very difficult isn't it in relationships when we have to accept really the death of relationships um, that we would have wanted to hold on to um, and sometimes that's because you know people pass over and a lot is unresolved uh, in those relationships and one of the things that I was wondering about recently is you know for the people that have passed over who I know struggled with a lot of things you know, I wonder if they really have come to a place where they have healed now and uh, also that I'm looking forward to that opportunity to connect with them again and hopefully heal with each other and experience that kind of forgiveness uh, for what we did that kind of remained wounded within us at one time um, because with nature on the surface it may look like something is dying but really I don't believe that there is such a thing as death I think that it appears as if there is a death on the surface but really it's just a part of a much bigger story and that 
that's what nature kind of teaches us is that we are part of a much bigger story we don't know all the answers yet there will be the spring there will be the summer and it's like the spirit keeps reinventing itself um, so in meditation now these days um, that still small voice whispers that to me that kind of transcendent knowing that there is more um, so anyway uh, it's great to connect with you um, I hope you uh, follow the links underneath the video to the song Forever Autumn I really look forward to hearing from you actually and um, perhaps you can let me know what you think of it and what your thoughts are on uh, the seasons and how they kind of reflect things that go on in your life as well. Um, so I found this lovely poem that I thought I would end this video with and it's called The Death of Autumn. It kind of encapsulates everything that um, I've been saying and it's by uh, Edna St. Vincent Millay. Uh, so this is The Death of Autumn. When reeds are dead and a straw to thatch the marshes and feathered pampas grass rides in the wind. Like aged warriors westward, tragic thinned of half their tribe and over the flattened rushes. Stripped of its secret, open stark and bleak, blackens afar the half forgotten creek. Then leans on me the weight of the year and crushes my heart. I know that beauty must ail and die and will be born again. But ah, to see beauty stiffen staring up at the sky, O oh, autumn, autumn, what is the spring to me? Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, great to connect with you again. I hope wherever you are in the world that you're enjoying the season and uh, I'll leave you with some more of uh, Forever Autumn and uh, I look forward to connecting with you again. Bye for now.